Welcome to the Gate 7 International Podcast, your official English source for all things Olympiakos FC and Greek football. The first day of training is when I realized, oh, this is why they win the league every year. When I, I spoke with Kevin, if I'm going to sign or no for Olympiakos, he said, you are pretty good direct, my friend. I can't speak, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening, everybody? It's 120 Greek time. What, what a match in Bratislava. Olibiagosa through to the next round of the Europa League. And it just has to be said, um, I'm, I'm dying for this, but someone please call the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, someone yes. Call, the, call doctor. the doctor. Call the doctor right now. Someone call the psychologist. Somebody call the cardiologist. My God. I don't know how I got, how, how we all got through that. Costa, how are you doing? Man? My man, my man. I finally, I think I finally understand the English. I think I finally understand the English. I didn't understand them last season, Bluto Goritz. Don't ask me why I just didn't. I didn't understand them in the Euros finals. I understand them now. My dear English friends, and there's many of you, I finally understand you. You're, it's me you're talking to. It's me you're talking to. Bloody hell, man. I mean, guys, welcome to another episode of Gate 7 International. I think I even forgot to say that. Uh, I'm Costa. I'm joined by our good friends, collaborator Costas Dianos is back with me on this late night. Dramatic night in Bratislava. We made it. European football is secure for next season. Oh, <laughs> finally. We're, we're, we're going to get into it. There's another game already next Thursday. But all right, let, let's just let's just walk through that penalty shootout. Um, my prediction was for a dramatic uh, a dramatic night. Anybody who listened to the preview the other day, Costa, I know you and I talked about it as well, that we were in for a like dramatic Aruka. night. Like Aruka. You were so right. You were so right. Like Aruka. It's like you saw it on your dreams. Although Aruka didn't have penalties, but I know yeah. what you meant. Yeah, no, it just... It... <laughs> It felt it felt like one of those nights, and yeah, that's the comparison I made the other day. Like it felt like the Aruka game where Paolo Bento came in, and uh, in a similar situation for for Corberan, I think more difficult. I think I said it the other day as well. I think this is the most difficult situation any manager has walked into at Olympiacos. Uh, it is a small miracle, given the circumstances. Even if the opposing team was playing with ten men. Getting to that penalty shootout, I think uh, whoever follows me on, 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 on Twitter, on socials, they know the first thing I did was pour myself a, a glass of whiskey. And that was the only way I was getting through that penalty shootout, mate. And whoever and, uh, doesn't follow you on Twitter better do this right now because your <laughs> tweets are amazing. If you're not following uh, Costa Levoyanis and Olivia Cosi, you do it right now. I don't care what that means. Do it right now. <laughs> Thanks to the Costa. Similarly, you've got it there at Llanos Costas. Follow him, guys. I got a WWE exclusive coming up. Follow me right now. It's it's right now, guys. Uh, um, the, the comments on fire here. I'm going to go straight to the comments. See what's ah, up. Going straight to the comments. Come on, let's people, do this. People joining us from from all over the world. Olivia Olivia Cara. Freddie Mercury's in the house, back from I the knew dead. he was alive. I knew he was alive. Back from you the dead. To me. You knew you, you didn't listen to me. John Chabukas from Australia. Chabukas 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 whatever, Tibuki, I don't know. Eh, 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 um, eh, eh, sorry, eh, Johnny. Eh. <laughs> put my donation from last week's towards Bachelik's bonus payment. This is why you need a world-class keeper. Great penalty save. Um, so... Backstory, Costas Llanos sends me a text right before the shootout begins. He says, how are you feeling? He says, oh, it smells bad. Um, but inside me, I, I thought Bachelik's got a save in him. He's definitely got at least one save in him. And luckily for us, it was the crucial one just before the fifth penalty. And then uh, Mathieu Valbuena got his redemption for, you know, for missing that penalty in, in Bulgaria last year. So what a way to, to cap it off tonight. Uh, and I, I've got to say, Costa, I don't know about you, the guys, the guys in the chat, whoever's watching live, send us like your experience. You know what? I'm going to drop the link 
as well. Whoever wants to join, whoever has stayed up until 1.30 Greek time, wherever you are, guys, if you want to chime in, tell us your feelings and sentiments from the game. <sighs> Mate, uh, when, when Batchlick saved that penalty, I think I was so nervous and so anxious and so hopeful I thought the waterworks were going to start. Really, I was, I was, I was on the verge. Really, I was on the verge, and then my heartbeat was just must have been above 160, close to 200. I'm not kidding. Until until he converted that, and thank thank goodness we didn't have to live through sudden death penalties. I, I don't know if I could take it. <laughs> I really don't know if I could take it. Did you watch the the final with Ike back in 2009? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. I was in New York actually when I'm watching that game. Oh, fancy! Yeah, no, I was I was living in New York at the time. That was a... what time was it when you were watching this shit? I mean, uh, I... it was like three, four in the afternoon or something. And I bet all those Americans were like, "Okay, it's cool." You know, we got a busy dinner, so it's it's easy now. It, we had this crazy Greek slash. It was Greek in a Greek cafe. Slash was... Millwall slash Tottenham, <laughs> just throwing his shit around. It was in a Greek cafe in Astoria, to be fair. And I was oh, watching Astoria, it. Astoria, and I was Astoria. watching it. I was watching it with a friend of mine that's an Ike fan as well. So, so we had a bit of banter. Me too. Uh, we had a bit of banter. Yeah, no, it was fun. How, how about you, man? Like, how did you? How did you live through that? Well, I mean, first of all, I'd like to apologize to uh, Zrinski, Mostar, and Tobol fans because it was unprofessional for my behalf to call them villages in our last uh, in my last appearance. It was very unprofessional, and uh, I take that back. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank uh, Adi Harongi for his lovely uh, comment. Uh, congratulations to you, pal, as well. Congratulations to Maccabi Haifa. All the best. Hope you guys do amazingly well in the Champions League. Uh, back at that Ike game, I watched it with a, with a big group. It was a bunch of girls with us as well. I was just losing it. it there was an Ike fan, but he was a nice Ike fan. He was, he's a really good friend of mine. George Tsatsaronis, big, uh, big uh, shout out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I almost, I almost had a heart attack. It really looked like it was slipping out of our hands. Nothing like tonight. Uh, basically, um, whoever underestimated Thomas Watzlik, Jan M. Villa, and Mathieu Valbuena, you are at least ignorant, my opinion, Olympiacos fans and non-Olympiacos fans. Uh, I want to think, for, I also want to say a big congratulations to Carlos Corberan. The guy has been with the team less than a week, maybe over a week. I bet he has barely managed to bring his stuff over to Greece. Uh, and he still managed to get to, 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 to seal a, play, a place in Europe for Olympiacos. The, the, probably the worst Olympiacos since the Petr Nachronia. We're going to call them dark years here. I don't know how else to, 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 to translate them. Stone years sound stupid, so I'm just going to say uh, dark years. Uh, just give this guy time. Give this guy time. I don't care what that means. And personally, I feel like if this guy manages to win a double for Olympiacos and get them into the Europa League and out of the group stages, Olympiacos fans need to build a statue for this man. And on that note, I'm going to get my dinner. I'm going to be back with you in five seconds. Kostas Lianos, ladies and gents, he's got to get his dinner at 1.20 Greek time. That's, that's, you know, healthy diet there, right there. He's got his beer ready. He's going to the microwave, getting his food. That's dedication for you there. Labros Irmos, a lot of you asking questions. Where is Labros? The guy, he's there. He says he's sick, not just from Olympiagos. Labro, if you're following live, stop being a pussy. Get on here. Labros equals ratings. That's all I have to say about There you that. go. There about you go. That. There you go. I said it. Get your ass on here. Labros Irmo. It's thanking Hussein as well. Someone jump in and replace me. I did a malaka, just get on here. Like even for five minutes. Malaka, best message in Malaka. The Malaki is enough for this. I stopped yalo. Right, I'm getting a beer, man. I already had like three of them, but I don't care. I'm getting no. the fourth one. Well, wherever you are, whoever you are, get Ugh. yourselves a drink right now. We're going to talk about the game. It's a celebration, you guys. It's a celebration. It's the first win of the season, and I know some people are giving shit in the chat yeah. already. It's like congratulations, we beat Barcelona. Uh, Context is everything, guys. Um, I think there are obviously positives and negatives to take from today's game. But um, if we start with with the formation at the beginning of the game, it was showing a 4-4-2. Uh, 
Mm. I don't think in the end it was exactly what I said yesterday in terms mm. of predicted lineup. They shaped up with Masuras on the left, Radjelovic on the right, Zinkanago playing in the hole. <laughs> People giving shit to Zinkanago, and of course Zinkanago gets the goal in in uh, in the second half. I thought Pierre Kunde and M Villa looked really good in 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 midfields, like uh, M Villa in particular. Just one of those performances today that you expect players like him, players like Youssef Al Arabi, to show up and put in a big performance. These big contract players, and I think I think uh, I think Jan M Villa did a really good job today. He's involved in the assist with the, the um, huge pass. assist. Well, it wasn't an pass assist. assist. Pass yeah, pass but assist. that's what Jan Mvila is. He did the same things in France and with Sunderland. That's who Jan Mvila is. Yeah. That's why anyone who says Jan Mvila doesn't belong at Olympiacos is at least ignorant. My opinion. And he, and he can really thrive in that in that role. Like we we obviously analyzed the tactics of the new manager, and we see that he's enjoying his seems to be enjoying his football. I, again. He's getting a lot of the ball, getting getting good looks, making good passes, through balls. So that was good to see. I have to say the Cisse Bar partnership was better than when Manolas came on. Yeah. Uh, and I also thought Gonzalo Avila had a really good game. Yeah. Like, really good game. Like, he, he was good. Like, made runs forward all the time. Um, he never... Well, of course, have two right backs. How's that for a, for a piece of news? Only because I have not yeah. one, but two right backs. Yeah, let's not talk about the left back, though. Well, well, we haven't seen the other one yet, haven't we? No, we haven't. And I don't know if the other, the Moldovan, is going to stick around much longer. Maybe Adi but... wants to chip in on that a little bit. Adi Harongi. Yeah, about Doron Leidner, who we haven't seen yet, guys. Hello, Yasu, Kostamo. Yasu, Kostamo. Cheers, yes, everyone. Yeah, Cheers, this everyone is a watching. celebration, and I'll explain why very soon. Especially to all you people, oh, we beat Barcelona and crap. I'll explain to you real soon why this is a celebration. What else can we say? Um, Masuras again. Uh, he's missed the chance in the 23rd minute. That header, that free header he's had after an Avila uh, overlap on the right-hand side. That was shortly after, uh, shortly before the 24th minute chance Youssef Al Arabi had that ball that came in over the top. My God, that pass that Pierre Kunde made. Mm -hmm. That chip, that little dink that he made in over the top, that would have been a wonderful goal. I think those were the two kind of clear cut chances that we had in, in, the, in the first half. And then, you know, Masuras misses that chance, but he's involved in the second goal. He's in the right place at the right time. He's made the, made the head across goal put it into the danger zone and Aguibo Camaraz made a good run. And just before that, that happened, I was saying, you know, where the hell is he? He hasn't touched the ball. He's like a ghost. And out of nowhere, he flashes in and, and gets that goal to put us 2-1 ahead. Then let more that drama. be the goal that puts him back in. Let, it, let that be the goal that finally resurrects him after the Copa Africa. Hopefully. I, I still think there's, there's a long way to go because while I thought that in the first half, we had more or less control. I think the opposition was limited to shots from distance. You look at the stat sheet, they've had shots on target, but all four shots on target in the first half from outside the box. They didn't penetrate, I would say. I think we had control of the game. And you started to see some of, the, some of what the new manager wants to do. And you know what, guys? You saw passion. I noted this down. We made five fouls in the first five minutes. You just saw the bodies flying in. Even when, when things, just, just before things started to get tough in the second half, you really saw just like bodies flying in everywhere, like people falling over to block the ball, um, sacrificing their bodies, putting their bodies on the line. And then there was that incident where there was the flare-up. There was that tussle between the players when I think Green went down from a challenge from Avila and then Cissé and everyone got involved, the ref gave some cards out. Mm. And you thought that when that happened, oh, great, you know, this is going to kill the rhythm of the game. This is good for us. But it completely boomeranged in their favour. Uh, after that, you know, we you just saw the legs were gone. Right? 
the team you just thought, oh my god, if this is going to extra time, there's no way we can hang on. The last fifteen. And that's where the minutes. passion comes in. That's where the passion comes in. You know, the last 15, 20 minutes, we were hanging on by the skin of our teeth. Really, like that. And and then, of course, the equaliser comes the 92nd minute, just like against uh, against Maccabi Haifa in Israel. Last, in, yeah, in the, at the end, yeah. The, it uh, comes in the closing moments, moments, yeah. It comes in the closing moments of the game, and you're just like, <sighs> here we go again. Um, then they go down to 10 men, obviously, and... Now, what, what I wanted to say is that as, as soon as you saw the legs go, we started to go back into old habits. And I, I mentioned that yesterday as well, is that when things aren't going your way, what happens is you, you, you go back into old habits. And we started to see Martin's ball, is what I'm calling it now. And that's a bit of a, dis <laughs> that, that, that's a, bit of a disservice or like, you know, not nice thing to say about Martins because the first two seasons we played good football, but essentially what we saw was Pedro Martins' team just sitting back, not able to make three passes, and it was it was grueling. It was a grueling encounter, my friend. And we're probably going to see that a lot this season. Like I said, I mean, Corberan came in very late in this team. He barely had any time. And he still managed to seal a place in Europe. I don't think Pedro Martins would have made it through. I honestly believe Pedro Martins would have choked. I honestly do. Again, like, I mean, that was last year, Nolan Lidner Fox. That was last year. That's not this year. Olympiacos are probably the worst Olympiacos we've seen since the Dark Ages. Petri Nachronia. The Stone Years. <laughs> We're not going to call that. It sounds so <laughs> stupid. We're not going to call that. <laughs> We are just not going to call that. It just sounds so stupid in English. <laughs> the direct translation. The dark years. Well, I mean, do you have it's like something out of Lord of the Rings. Guys, guys, we got a bunch of uh, we got we got a bunch of uh, Greek slash whatever. Get on the comment section and give us a better translation for uh, Petra Nachronia other than dark years. I'll wait. Madam, I guess, and and also again, I'm I'm dropping the link in the chat. Like someone like. I'm really, I really want somebody. People, come on! Like, it's one of those nights, guys. And and don't don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Like, oh, why are we overjoyed that we beat Slovan? We're over. <laughs> We're happy may because I? may because, I? No, go, please, please, please. May I? First of all, I really hope there was a big celebration in the locker room after this win. Yeah. As big as all the times we beat Arsenal at the Emirates. As big. Because the team needs the psychology. They need that boost. They need that feel that, you know what, we did this. You know what, we're on track. It's like, you know, I want them to feel like men. Like, you know, they achieved something. Like they got their mojo back. Guys, this is probably the worst Olympiacos we've seen since the Petr Nachronia. I'm still waiting for your translations. We have a manager that joined us. A week ago, maybe just a bit more than that. He barely had time to bring his stuff to Greece. He barely knows the names of his players. And he still got the team into Europe. The trend, the signings have yet to play. Juan hasn't played. Leitner hasn't played. We have this Conrad De La Fuente guy coming through. Uh, AK-47 has barely done anything. This is still a team in transition. A team with players that are still going to leave a team of players that still want to push through. We saw a bunch of players that still feel like doing stuff for this team. Mathieu Valbuena, Yanem Villa, Thomas Vatslik. I'm going to say this. Useinu Ba was still playing after being hurt. And yeah, Ba has had some shocking performances. But you know what? I think he showed something. I think he showed some intention that he wants to play for this team. Lazar Adzelovic is another one. Yusef El Arabi showed, uh, showed signs over there. This is a team that needs the psychology, needs the mentality. They don't need the whole thing, don't celebrate because that was just Slovan Bratislava and you still suck. We need this team to get back into the to, to, to get back into the rhythm, get back into what they know, so that Olympiacos can win the league, win the double, and make it to the Europa League. Because you know what? Apolnas Lemesu can still do this, you know. Apolnas Lemesu, they can still pull this off if Olympiacos are not serious. We need Olympiacos at the best possible fitness level and at the best possible me mental state they can. Yeah, just on that point about fitness, I've seen that point come up in the chat numerous times as well. 
really, I don't know what, what the hell was happening at preseason last season and this season in particular. This season, we said there's no excuses. The team has a proper preseason to go into. We know more of this. We're tired. We've been playing for two years nonstop. I don't know what Pedro Martins did to them. Uh, I had big doubts over the fact that we were playing six friendlies in 10 days. And before those friendlies, there was normal training sessions where they run a hell of a lot. But it, it is really worrying. Like, even in the first half where we managed to kind of control the situation, you looked at some of the players and you just thought the touches are a little bit heavy. Like Zincanago in particular, El Arabi still a bit heavy as well, still got a heavy touch. Um, is is worrying. Like, I don't know how many more injuries we came out of from this game. Like, Ma Masuras was playing this game and he, he lasted the entire game. 120 minutes and penalties. And he had a knock like going into this game. Uh, Bar went down and you start thinking, oh, no, he's got that back problem as well. Uh, Tiquinho, what the fuck, man? Like, I think he wants to go. I think he's just checking oh, out. Tiquinho. Don't do that. It's like what he did before the equaliser. He's just like, if you're going to pretend to be injured or if you're injured, like fall over or something. And But that was, that was insane. That was insane. You know what? I hope... I hope he's booked his ticket and he's getting the first flight to Brazil now. I hope done. Like he's done. I I'm gonna be honest with you, Costa. I I am a bit I am a bit optimistic about the future, mainly because of Corberan. When mm -hmm. I went out on Sport FM, the amount of comment and, and and bullshit I heard, guys, the championship is way ahead of the Greek Super League. I'm gonna say this. With all due respect to Olympiakos, Panathinaikos, Paukaik and Daris, almost all of them, if not all of them, if they were playing in the championship as they are right now, I don't think they'd be pushing for a promotion. I think most of them at least would be just fighting to avoid relegation. And here's a manager that, finished, that took a team, a, a Huddersfield team with zero world-class players, not a lot of talent, but talented players, and finished third. He made it to the playoff finals, was eliminated by Nottingham. They sucked. Admittedly, Huddersfield sucked in the final. I'll admit this. But my God, he almost made it to the Premier League. And now with less than a week at Olympiacos, he already got them into, the, into Europe. Let the man work. I don't know what we're going to see. We're probably going to see a lot more tragedies this season. I want to say this. Guys, Olympiacos fans, be prepared for the worst this season. I'm not kidding. Be prepared for the worst. But let the man work. I honestly believe if this man works next season, could be something special. Other than that, I still believe Olbiakos can still be the best of the worst, which means they win the league tie. They, they win the league. I don't know about a double, but if this man works and gets to bring players that he still wants before transfer deadline day, maybe Olbiakos can make it to the Europa League, which I think that's realistic right now. And still make it through the uh, the group stages. My opinion. Costa, I agree with you. I think it's still very early. And uh, we have a rather traumatizing experience. Uh, and also just bad football that we've seen for over a year now. So frankly, <laughs> you could almost be anyone come in and say, oh, we're seeing something better. But, but really, because we have taken the time to do the analysis... Uh, and we see that we start to see elements of those, you know, that tactical approach that Corbelan likes to bring to the game. And that's also, you know, he brings a, a mix of different systems. He talked about playing with four different shapes up front and three different shapes in defense. And you saw that kind of versatility today as well in his coaching and his ability to react to in game situations. When he's, I mean, he's bought on Tiquinho and then he's replaced him with Kane and then he's had the balls to take Kane off and put Balbuena on. So, I mean, if anything, like for me, I, I said it on Twitter earlier, it's a breath of fresh air for me having somebody on the touchline that, that really lives the game and is just getting behind and on his players' backs during the game, giving instructions. And for me, that passion really translated to the players because... It's something that he also emphasised a lot in his pre-match comments, how important the emotional management was by the players in this game. And the other thing that he mentioned was that he needed warriors. 
Well, like he needed players that are brave, needed brave players to play in this kind of game. And I think people answered to that call tonight. Yeah, I, 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 anyone that is kind of ex <clears throat> again, we're really biacos. We want to be entertained. We're used to it so many years. We want to see entertaining football, but it's just not realistic to ask for that right now. I don't. Not care. right now. Or they were honest. They, they weren't. They weren't shit. going for for tiki taka tonight. They were just planning to to go through. And sorry to interrupt you. Just just a yeah. very quick one. Salomon Joker, you say I overestimate the second division of England. Please explain to me how I overestimate it in the comment section. But yeah, okay. This is these are opinions. Um, overestimating second division. Okay, it's not. No, but how? But how do I overestimate it? I look the, the championship. I've said it before. I think is one of the hardest leagues in the world. Yeah, it is. It call is. Me, it is. Call me call me an idiot, but I don't think a Greek team can beat any championship team right now. I don't. I'm not sure about that, but I personally feel like the top five of Greece would struggle in the championship. That's so. my opinion. And I, you think and I we could like be, to, uh, to, to you think we could beat Fulham that. last year? Fulham, Bournemouth, definitely not. Right. Definitely not. Full, uh, Bournemouth, I don't know about Bournemouth, but Fulham, definitely not. Anyway, you're right, Costa. Give the give the manager time to work. I I was saying just just a moment ago, I care a shit if we played good football tonight. For me, yeah, it was important yeah. for us to win uh, and show character, passion, and grind out a result. That's the most that we could expect for today, uh, and give the give the manager more time to bed in the new players. <laughs> and the only person that we cannot blame is the manager. Of course. Now it's over to you, board Olibiakos. Make the signings that we need. I'm happy that Mr. Marinakis was in Bratislava today to watch the game. If he's happy with what he saw, I know he's not. It's up to you now. It's over to the board now. There are more than 20 days left for transfers. Transfers go No, on. Nolan Lidner, Fox. Lamia would not be fighting for a promotion spot in the championship. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Sorry, Costa. Sorry. No, no. Um, Very rude for my. You're opinion. right, and look, there, there's frustration everywhere. Uh, hello, Sila. Welcome back, buddy. He says I'm sick and tired of watching this squad play. Honestly, early days, my friends. Where the 12th of August. Transition. The 12th of August. Yeah. It is. We we talked about rebuild. Rebuilds what we want. Rebuilds what we're getting. Um, and, and I have to say, like, I am looking forward to seeing the new players come in. South yeah. Korean in particular, I think he'll Hwang. make a difference. Yeah, he, he will make a difference in the midfield. And don't write Pierre Kunde off either. Yeah. Like I thought he did, he did pretty well today. Like, Terrible he, he, miss, but don't write him out. Not no, just yet. No, he, he he went for the top corner. He missed it. Um, Costa, yeah. you played amateur football, right? Semi pro. Semi pro. Oh, sorry, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> Your you're about to hit a penalty. Explain Man. this to me. Why, why target the top, uh, the top corner instead of the, the, the bottom, the bottom corner? Isn't it much safer? That's how I take penalties personally. Oh shit! Now I, I'm having people listening to my, to my secret. Taxi. I, I, I had my own routine for the penalty. I, I always generally like. It was funny, you know, when Masuras took the penalty, I saw yeah. his eyes. I saw his eyes and I was like, he's going to go for the bottom left corner. So I knew where he was going to shoot it. And normally when I'm take, when I would take a penalty, I took penalties for my club. Uh, I would always look where I wasn't going. And I would always faint my body towards the Me direction. Too. My, Me too. my eyes, my eyes were looking that way and my body would shape the way that I'm not shooting it. And then I would twist final minute and hit it into the other corner, uh, hard and low. Um, that, that was always my, my routine and i remember in training a lot of the time the keeper keeper from the from the club would say to me he already knew where i was going to shoot it when he didn't know me because i would look and i was like <laughs> i always always look where i'm not going to shoot but i always know where the ball's where i want to put the ball but yeah I mean, even mate even a even an amateur semi pro level you're going up to hit a penalty not in a penalty shootout but like yeah you you before you run up like your 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 feet your legs are 
starting to get pins and needles like it's uh you gotta handle the emotions and just clear your thoughts and and have confidence to go and hit it yeah but it's and more risky isn't it it's riskier isn't it to, to hit the, the top, top corner way. yeah Other you want to you want to like for me generally hit it hard and low yeah, and if you're if, it, if in doubt and it's a real pressure penalty like trying to hit it hard and down the middle but but okay, like we can talk about this, uh, you know, theory when it comes to penalties and whatnot for for a long time. I mean, Rude Van Nistelrooy used to hit them in the top left corner all the time. If you see him hit those penalties, Dimitris Alexandropoulos was the only one that could stop him. Sir uh, Alex Ferguson forgot that in an interview. He forgot that in an interview. Yeah, but but yeah, mate. I mean, after after 120 minutes, particularly for those players that took a penalty like Masuras. At the end of the game, after 120 minutes of running, that, that's uh, it takes an incredible amount of balls and bottle to, to step up and, and take one of those penalties. So, Salomon Joker, Avila could still beat uh, Versalico for a spot in the starting lineup. He was one of our best players in both legs, and Zinker Nagel can still be a, a starter. He did a, an incredible job at Watford, helping them pro gain promotion, did an incredible job with Nottingham Forest getting promotion yeah well i mean on that topic i wouldn't be surprised to see sima versalco play in the back three and yeah having yeah. uh playing three, as a wing three. back yeah maybe so, Radzelovic. i don't know how much of a future he has at the club i think he did his job today what we needed was for him to provide a bit of width and some pace whenever he got the ball uh his footballing iq is it just hasn't it hasn't improved like you either have it or you don't you would have thought that some time in Spain in Segunda would have done some good to his the tactical awareness, positioning on the pitch, etc. But haven't seen much difference um, from him. We needed him today. Um, that's what we had in terms of options on the wing. For Zinkanago, I really think it's a confidence thing. Um, and he needs a time of adaptation. And Ari's not here with us today. But um, he, made a, he made a good point in a chat we had during the game. Um, per Zetterberg also it also took him a long time to adapt to to Olympiagos. I think almost a year, like, basically, almost a year. Yeah, like, I mean, six months, a year. I can't remember, but it took Per Zetterberg a long time. Six months is basically a year, especially in Greece back then. Yeah. So where, where the champion immediately went to the Champions League group stages. Yeah. So give him give him some time. I, I think. I think we've all established that it's been a weird preseason. Things went wrong. The players don't look fit. Or the players looked overworked. I really like. I, I, like I've no idea what Pedro Martins was trying to achieve. Whether he was trying to have the team ready for October, or I have absolutely no idea. Too many injuries. But I think with Zinconago, it's it is a, a confidence issue. You saw it at least after the goal. After the goal, he was he was pressing high up the pitch, like better touches. He looked faster. He looked more confident. You could see it immediately, like the release. But but also you can and you raised a really good point earlier, Costa, about the dressing room after the game, and you know you hope that the team celebrated. And I really do. I really do. They, they Big really, celebration, major celebration. I hope they drink tonight. I hope they drink in the, on the plane back. I hope really they start drinking it. and sing. I really hope. I really hope so. They really need it, Costa, because I don't know if you noticed this, but the body language after they took the penalties, it was like Bukhalakis after he hit the penalty, there was no emotion. There was nothing. But after they, Valbuena hit it, he emotioned at, the, uh, at his teammates to come and yeah. celebrate. Yeah, because okay, Valbuena is Valbuena and yeah. Valbuena is different class and he's lived through experiences and experiences. Uh, but it, it, it masuras us as well. Eh? You just saw that tension, that the tension and 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 the pressure, and you get a sense of again what we've talked about many times before about the atmosphere in the dressing room at Olympiacos not being a happy place, etc. Um, so I I really do hope that this is a season defining moment, is what I called it yesterday. Um, yep, absolutely right, absolutely uh, right. Apollon. Apollo and Limassol are champions of Cyprus. Um, our good friends. Nobody Stel, underestimates them. No, Nobody but, underestimates them and shouldn't uh, underestimate them. Our good friend Stel from the Omonia podcast, No Choftes, 
he told us that, I mean, they won the championship by the skin of their teeth. They almost threw it away last year. I think their managers just got sacked as well after elimination. So they're going through a bit of turbulence. We have some information as well that the team is wasn't well prepared for the Maccabi games. And we saw evidence of that uh, in the games that just took place. So I think it's an evenly, evenly matched tie. Our record in Cyprus, I would say, is... Well, not great. Well, it's kind of 50-50, isn't it? Because we knocked out... An Orthosy, Apoel, Metai Omonia. Who else did we knock? We knocked out an Orthosy before that amazing season in 1998-1999. Do you remember? Yeah, 4-2. There was a 4-2 win, I remember, away from home. Uh, and Omonia most recently with the win at, at Karaiskagi. I think two, I think a goal from Minar Abi, and I can't remember who got the last one. But um, but yeah, guys, I think this is the moment to say, if you're still with us, if you're watching later on, hit that like button, help to spread the word, Gate 7 International, bringing together Olympiagos fans from all over the world. We're here for you, good times and bad, at one o'clock, two o'clock Greek time, whatever time it is, after games like these, to chat about the games. It's never too late to talk about Olympiacos, guys. And as, I, I, I want to remind everyone, I think Costa is being a little too, uh, uh, is being a little too nice. This podcast appears on press conferences for Olympiacos. We are there to answer, to, to ask the questions you have. This is the place to be, spread the word. This is the place for uh, all of the uh, Olympiacos fans around the world. Of the diaspora. There you go. Costa said it better than me. Thank you, Costa. As always, hit that subscribe button if you're joining for the first time. Get involved in the conversation. Hit the bell. You get a notification every time we go live or a new episode is up. We've got match vlogs coming up as well. Some of the boys will be in Greece for the Apollon game, I think, and for Bas, Bazian in our first game of the season. Hell, I'm going to be here for this one. Add it. Add this. So we're going to have match vlogs. My boy here, Costa, is going to make sure of that. Aren't yeah. you, Costa? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to start sending texts tomorrow morning. It's, it's, so match vlogs coming up, guys, as well. We'll have preview of the Apollon game. We'll get our Cypriot friends on to come and talk about Apollon, what we can expect from them. So lots more coming on the channel. Like and subscribe, ladies and gents. What else we got, Costa? I'm going to go through the chat because I've... I think we've left it for for a little bit. Yeah, we um, have. Costas Rub, I think this is a new sub. Hi Gavri, the team was very bad today, but the qualification was very important for the players and for the new coach to build the team, which he has in mind. Yeah, very, absolutely. Very, very, well said. very well said, Costa. Our namesake. Etsy, Etsy. Our namesake. Dinho. Absolutely right. Comedo que to red lays with the red and white. Red and white dots there. That's it. I still need more uh, suggestions for Petr Nachronia translated. I think I think I saw a nice one. Uh, we did. We, we saw a few. Yeah. Couldn't watch penalties. Legend seven. Well, I just realized how the how how my English friends feel like every four years, every two years actually. Yeah. Red hip hog number seven. Slovan scored two goals against us with ten players, both of them on set pieces. Rare goals. Won't see them happening even on. Amateur level. Uh, like, I, like I said, guys, Olympiacos fans, be ready. Be prepared for the worst this season. I'm not even kidding. Be prepared for the worst this season. You, it's you, all, it's, let, let Corberan work. Just let Corberan work. You want to talk about amateur? Have a look at the pass assist that Kabetsis gave to the, Slo uh, the Slavia Prague goal for the equaliser. That's, that, was, that was bloody amateur. And it sucks, doesn't it? It, guys, this is serious. Let, let's yeah, talk been... about this a little bit. Let's talk about, you know, it's serious, okay? And I, the, the, one of the reasons why I love, I love Gate 7 International, and I love Costa Levoyani, I love Ari Bulubasi, I love La Brosirmo, I love, I, and I love Peter as well, is that we're objective. We're not here to say things about the Greek opposition. I'm going to say this. It is a tragedy that Pauk, Panathinaikos, and Aris and Dyke, for that, for, for, for that matter, are not in Europe this season. If we keep this up, let's, let's think about this. Probably the worst Olympiacos since the Petr Nachronia, I'm still waiting for translations, are our best hope for Europe this season. If we keep this up, it's not unlikely 
that the champion will have to play qualifiers for conference. This is serious. This is not funny at all. At all. In any way, shape, or form. I'm not happy with Panathinaikos out. I'm not happy with Aris out. I'm not happy with Pauk out. I'm not happy that I screwed up with some team from Bosnia. I don't remember their name. All due respect to them. This is serious. Nothing funny about this. To be honest, like I, I agree with you. I think it's a shame, but also I'm just fed up of carrying the weight of the Greek coefficient every single year. Um, I'm not interested in talking about Olympiakos being the most successful club in Europe the last 30 years or whatever it was. Like There was these statistics that came out the other day. I knew that already. I didn't need statistics to tell me that. So um, I am fed up of carrying the coefficient. I do want Greek football to to improve. If the level of the Greek league improves, well, you're doing actually... it this year. You're doing it again this season. I know. I know. Yeah. That's you're what I'm saying. It's like I think what's happened, and this is this is an important point. What's happened uh, the last few years in Greek football? Greek football continues to deteriorate. The level yeah. keeps dropping, and and so far, Olympiakos has managed to kind of stay afloat or above uh, above all of that, and remain on a european level and to an extent i feel like we've kind of dropped into that mud this year uh with what we've seen and and like you said it is going to be a a challenging season is it's tough to call it's still early it's still early because the season hasn't kicked off it's still early because we haven't finished making moves in the transfer window i still think that the squad is going to look very different come september time when the transfer window slams shut on the 15th of september much different much different So it's very difficult to say right now what kind of season it's going to be. But um, at the end of the day, it's a fair reflection of the level of Greek football. And I've said it time and time again, that conference league football should not be a taboo topic. It's a reflection of the state of Greek football right now. We saw I see what today. you mean. I see what you mean, but no, I'm going to let you finish. Sorry, I interrupt. I really no, I'm, pretty much, I'm, you. I, I, I'm pretty much done. Like... Yeah, that, that, that's where Greek football is. That's where Greek football is right now. It's conference level. We proved it I mean, to an extent with our performance tonight, but also against, uh, against Maccabi. Like, we're not Champions League level right now. And it, it's, we'll see. We'll see if we're Europa League level. But then when we, if we get through to the Europa League group stages, there are some serious clubs there. There's not Linfields and Hibernians from Malta and, you know, clubs from, you know, with no disrespect from you know the, the outskirts of Europe, you're playing against some some big European teams with history and and foundation and and budgets and, and and talented players and good units with good coaches. So we'll see. We'll see next week against Apollon. We'll see how how it goes in that tie. And and I honestly believe this. Like I think as a club right now, if our aspiration is to play Champions League, you have to prove that. You have to prove that through qualification. And if you get through qualifiers, a team like us playing from the second round, like we did in Pedro Martins' second season, we went through three rounds of qualification. And that means that you deserve to be in the group stage. We didn't deserve to be in the group stage of the Champions League this season. No, we didn't. And, 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 and you get what you deserve. You get what you deserve in the end. With a little bit of luck today, because we have personalities. We have personalities on the pitch. We have players with quality on big contracts that needed to prove things tonight. And some of them, most of the big contract players did tonight. Vachlik, uh, Mvila, Valbuena, Mvila. Uh, Valbuena, El Arabi to an extent, like had some, some yeah. decent touches. Yeah. He's, still, he's still not fit. I don't think he's 50%. I don't think El Arabi yeah. is even close to 50% right now. So, um, you know, those, those players, they turned up. Uh, I'll end there because I know you wanted to to answer. No, no, no! Please, please, please go ahead. That's it. I never get tired of you. I never get tired of you. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done on that. Point. Well, okay then. Well, I mean, I've said this before, and I'm going to keep saying this. Olympiacos need to get into that Bayern Munich level, not in the sense that be as good as Bayern. Olympiacos will never be as good as Bayern ever. What I'm saying is, what Bayern are in Germany, Olympiacos need to be in Greece. Bayern are a completely different level in the Bundesliga. It's Bayern Munich and everyone else. Olympiacos need to be them and everyone else. 
they need to find a way to go to, 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 to overcome the Greekness of the Greek Super League. They need to overcome the norm of the Greek Super League. They always need to see themselves as something above. They need to see themselves as, listen, we definitely win the league and we're going to win the double because we are the best. And when it comes to Europe, we have the, the, we have the, following, uh, the following goals. If we make it to the Champions League, which we should always be targeting, last 16, that's our goal. If we make it to the Europa to the Europa League, the record quarterfinals. If we make it to the conference, we win the motherfucking thing. Or Libyakos or something else in Greece, and they have the ways and the money and the uh, infrastructure to become something else in Greece. I understand what you mean by the conference. I really, really understand you. But what I'm saying is, it will be a very, very dark time in the history of football. If the current Olympiacos decide that you know what, hey, you know what, I'm okay with conference. No, 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 no. 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 Reality you yourself for Champions League every season. I don't care how you are. No, no. I think I think the point I'm making is that there's a difference between reality and and what you want. Two different things. Yeah. So we want to be a Champions League team. Is where we believe. Where all of us believe we belong. We do belong there, among the stars. Yeah. Um, it would be it would be a historic low if we go down to the conference. But but I think you you said it like if if that does happen, then you've got to you've got to set the objective and set the bar high. Say yeah. all right, that's where we are, and let's go and try and win it. Yeah, win it. Beat West I, Ham. I, Beat eliminate West Ham in Lon at London Stadium. I don't care how ridiculous that might sound to some people, but that's for me, that's what I would expect. I would expect a clear communication on that. But yeah. anyway, uh, one one game at a time. Um, there is a comment here I'd like to bring up from our friend Leandro, who's in Exeter. He says, whoever doesn't have the patience and wants our team in the Conference League, they can go to Malta, Gibraltar and Andorra because this is what they deserve, says Leandro. My man uh, from England. There you go. I like that. Go. I like that. We know it. We feel him, don't we? You and I. <laughs> it's nice to win something after a long time. We deserve to enjoy it, says Hussein. It wasn't that long, to be honest, though. It wasn't that long. It feels like a long time, though, it doesn't does. it? It does, but it wasn't like if you put it down. Was... No, but he's right. He's right. But but even, right. E even in preseason, even in preseason, right, it was just like no shots on goal. We scored a goal from open play today. <laughs> Two. Two goals we from did. open play. Yeah, we did. We did. Okay, one was a, a deflection, but it was, you know, after build-up. And, and the second goal too. So, hooray. Whoop the fucking woo. Like, finally, some goals from open play. All, all at once. Greek Calcio. Big up, Greek Calcio. If you guys are into Italian football as well, this guy's like the man when it comes to scout reports and what's going on with Greek <laughs> players playing in Italian football. So um, go and check out Greek Calcio. Um, give him a like, subscribe to his channel. He's just starting up. Um, he says he's going out yeah. celebratory beers. Thank you for all you do. Have a great night, lads. Get on Labros. Stop sucking. Uh, Thank you, Greek, Greek Calcio. Thank you. Uh, where's Greek Calcio from? Is he Italian? I think he's, I think he's a Greek Canadian. Um, ah, so, sorry if I so sorry if I insulted out, yeah. you. Yeah, yeah you sorry if out. I insulted you, Greek couch show. If you're not Canadian, um, big up all my friends in Canada. By the way, got nothing but mad love for my Canadian friends. Uh, East Coast, massive love for Vancouver as well. If anyone's from Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, I don't know if there are any Canadians with us today. So everyone's like, "Where's Labras? Where's Labras? Where's Labras?" Labras is being a pussy. He's like, "Oh, my voice hurts." Oh, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm oh. not gonna say that. All I'm gonna say is Labras equals ratings, and you can see it right now. People are calling for him. No one yeah. has ever called for me. Has anyone ever called for Aris and you? Honestly, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. You can ask. We can put. We can put a a, a, a poll. A poll. Labro, who's, Labro, who's your favorite? Jesus. So who's yeah, your yeah, favorite? No, no, right now. Do it. No, no, do it right now. I'm not even kidding. Do it right now. Do it right now. You think I'm kidding? Oh, I'm no. not. 
Okay, guys, okay, you... comment section, comment section. Who's your favorite Gate Gate Seven International host, and why it's Labros? You have to explain why it's Labros. Of course, of course it's going to be Labros. Labros, there we go. We have one from uh, George Haralapopoulos. Thanks, pal. I got Misu Yorgo. <laughs> New Yorgo. Fucker. Oh, oh, Philos of Manos. Greetings from Naxos. Beautiful island. Naxos is one of the most beautiful islands in the entire world. That's the place. That's the what place, I know. The place of my ancestors. Naxos. Oh, really? Big up. You and, you and Manolas. Yeah, don't talk to me about Manolas right now. I'm not happy with him. But okay, we're not going to talk about Manolas. We're not, we're not going to talk about Manolas now, but we're going to talk about that later. Let's let's go. Up, 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 up. We have we have comments about you and me, Vasily oh, Zestos. Thank you so much. And the Pesh mode only Costa with a C. <laughs> dude, 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 we got credit. Lipo thank Magis. you so much, guys. We're always doing the best we can, mm -hmm. only for you, only for you. It's only about you. Everyone brings something different to this show, guys. If we were all the same, it would be fucking dull. We're all different. We all bring something different to the table. So um, very, very heartwarming to receive your, your love. I speak for everyone uh, on the show. Aris Labros, Costas with a K, and, and myself, of course. Uh, Manos saying Labros is... Uh, no, Labros lo yikane me piosometro que japia. I think he might be already. Labros is probably with the with the bottle right now, and <laughs> I don't know. Labro, I hope you're not popping pills like to to try and get some sleep after after tonight's game, mate. Like show us some signs if you're still with us. Adi Harongi, a uh, friend from from Israel. Sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of your name. Uh, when will Doran Leiden be part of the team? Uh, so he wasn't. Um, he wasn't put into the list because we had too many injuries. Um, so he couldn't be put into the list. So hopefully as of next week against the Pollon, he'll be there. We have somebody joining from... Uh, nice. Nice. Finally. Uh, all right. So can you... I don't you understand why people don't just join. I don't Pango, understand that. Pango 7. How are you guys? First off, Mike, uh, congratulations uh, for all the success on the pod. I've been following for quite some time. I'm uh, sorry I don't have my... Uh, Camera on here, been going for a run, trying to get the heart back in sync, right? After those penalties. Oh my goodness. Good man. Good. Thank you for joining us. No, thank no, you for yeah, following. We really appreciate you. Yeah, congratulations Thanks, to man. you guys. And then last thing, congratulations to the club. This is a, a tough win, but a big win uh, to have European football. And um, yeah, I think I think we saw some things. You guys have been talking about it, but we saw some things that are that we look forward to, you know, some of the midfield looking i think the i think the midfield looks significantly improved i think yeah. that as they're you know they're, they're creating some spaces they're finding spaces they're they're finding lanes for the balls and you know i like i like you know see this with those long balls uh, and villa from the back you know with some long balls i think there's some things that we can build upon so um it's it's definitely not our tobacco yet but uh we'll get there Far from it. Rome wasn't built overnight. Um, of course, of course. Indeed, there are positive signals to take. Um, definitely. Where, where are you calling from, mate? What's your I'm, name? I'm calling from uh, Parayotis. I'm calling from uh, Pennsylvania. So, um, uh, which part of up, Pennsylvania? Big up, PA. Where are you from in Pennsylvania? Uh, Pitts, Pitt, I'm in Pittsburgh right now, but the west side. Pittsburgh. Of the Pittsburgh. Yep. Yes, Pittsburgh. Yes, sir. I'm glad you guys are familiar. But... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me... Let me ask you something, Panayot. Who's your favorite Gate 7 international host and why is it Labros? <laughs> no, I got to love Labros rants, you know. We all have those. Uh, you know, we live through him for you with those moments. So it, those are important. But, no, I, I love all you guys. You know, it's been, it's been a pleasure. I've been listening to you guys for, for quite some time. And just seeing what you've been able to build, it's, it's really it's, it's spectacular. And getting, you know, getting your voice heard, it's, it's amazing. So uh, I'll, I'll continue following. But... Uh, I'm excited to see what's coming up. What's your prediction for this season? How do you see this team doing this season in terms of title, cup, and Europe? Yeah, so I think let's. I think I'm going to start with saying that our expectations are for the team to, to grow. I don't really have that many expectations when it comes to results, but that's not true. We're Olympiaco. We're going to win the league, right? Uh, we're going to we're going to win the cup. That should be our goal. I think what you said, Costa Eliano, uh, what you mentioned about we should be the the Bayern, you know, it should yeah. be expected. We step on the field. It should be expected that we win by two, three goal, goals. 
we should be scoring five, you know, sometimes. This is this is what we should expect, you know. You, you, you grew up seeing Giovanni just dancing around the, the rest of the league. I know the times are changing, but these are the expectations when you play for a club like Olympiaco. So, you know, we hope to get there. It's not going to happen overnight, but I think the, the goals should be every year winning the league, winning the cup. And I think I, I'm of the proponent that we should be uh, going for Champions League qualification every year. Um, you know, should be trying to push as far as we can. That's that's kind of as far as I, I'll go as to say what I think the goals are for Europe. But I think it's, it's not unre- unrealistic to at least push for Champions League every year. If we fall into Europa or even conference, we, should be, we shouldn't be unhappy, but it should be a Champions League should be the goal. That's my mindset. Champions League in what sense? Qualifying? Yeah, qualifying first, and then, you know, I'd like to not finish last in the in the group, uh, hmm. at least at least get to the next round. But and then you know everything happens from there. Anything can happen. So, um, isn't it amazing though that this team, this immensely problematic team, will still be playing in Europe this season? Yeah, it, it really is. That's that's kind of the you know you you uh, it's kind of like the risk reward with the, the qualifiers, right? A, a couple games can can set you up for, you know, uh, uh, at least a few months in Europe. So, you know, we got on the lucky end of the stick tonight. Um, that's just how it goes sometimes. But I think we, I think we'll have, I think we'll have success going forward. I think my biggest expectations are w- w- what we see on the pitch. You know, the results will take some time. Yeah. Um, but again, we're going to be like, oh, we expect uh, the league, the cup and, and more. So it's going to be tough for going I think Olympiacos' priority are the results right now, and then it's the football, which is why I say, I keep telling people, just give the guy some time, work things through. Don't give him the Leonardo Jardim uh, treatment from 2012 when he was sacked, even Mm -hmm. though he was undefeated in the league, and they finished third in that very difficult group, uh, Champions League group stage with uh, Montpellier, Champions of France then, Schalke and Arsenal. So yeah, just give him time, and you know, let's let's focus on the results first, and the football will come in later. The more time comes through, we haven't seen Huang, we haven't seen Leitner, we haven't seen AK forty seven. Uh, there's more players coming through. There's Conrad De La Fuente coming through. First ever American to play for Olympiacos. That's exciting, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Full American, maybe we've had we've had mm-hmm. like uh, uh, yeah, Filipe 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 I do Filipe apologize. Filipe I do apologize. Yeah, Cater Cater uh, Uliotis was another one. He's Greek American. But yeah, it's an interesting one. You know, um, I'm going to say something here, but for me, the short-term objective, or one of the short-term objectives needs to be to restore the fear. Mm. Because right now, I feel like going out even in Greece, I feel like the, the, the opponent, they look at us and they smell blood. And they're like, you know, these guys, they're mortal. Because... Yeah. Before you, we'd go into a game and it's expected, right? It's like, all right, we're going to bang three goals. Next game. You know, the Greek games were like what the Greek games are for the basketball team. They're like, you know, warm up for the EuroLeague games. And, and right now, the state of the club, we saw it in the playoffs before, like, you know, leading, leading up to the end of last season. The, the opposition, whether it was a Bazianina or whoever, they smelt blood and they went for us. They didn't come and park the bus and it made it very difficult for us during the playoffs. So I think first things first, you need to restore order. You need to restore the fear of playing against Olympiacos yep. in Greece. And then you, you start building from there. You build yep. the confidence and, and, and that's, that's where we are right now, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, for, so we need to we need to work from from the bottom up, and we need to start building that that confidence. And that's that really is a, a key word in all this discussion today is just rebuilding that confidence, rebuilding that squad, um, and and building a, a family atmosphere in the dressing room again. And that's really for me that those are those things I just mentioned now are the short term objectives from from now until until September. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think Costaliano, you also mentioned this too about the the uh, dressing room. You know, that I hope they're celebrating tonight. It is, you know, it is. You're right, Costa. Objective number one is is, you know, we got we have to to form a. Uh, I I've been saying it for quite some time, but it has to be like a a, a plan, a program, like a, a system that people buy into, and has to 
operate like that. I think that's what we saw in the first few years of Martins. And it's it's unfortunate that like it happens a lot of times in these big times of turnover that we saw. But you know, that yeah. that whole group just kind of meshed together. Everyone was playing hard, you know, you'd see Mika, Masura, Valle you know, they're all they they, pl- they were playing, they were playing some were playing for the badge, some were playing for, you know, their experiences in Europe, XYZ, but they, they played as a group and they played for each other and I hope we can find that again. Um, well, I, I truly believe in Corberan myself. I, 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 I think the Olympiacos have something really promising in him. And from then on, you know, this season is going to be what it is. I'm willing to be patient. And, uh, you know, let's see. Let's see. I think Olympiacos can still be at least the best of the worst. We haven't seen anything incre- anything stellar from the opposition. Let's see. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Anyways, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head out, but uh, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for um, calling us, and we hope to hear from you again. again. Absolutely. Thank you guys for making this far possible. You know, I really Take love care, the work. Thank and, you, mate. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Bye-bye. Bye. I never understood, Costa. Why so? Why Why aren't more people, like, calling during the uh, the show? Like, I mean, uh, surely I think... the line should be, should be full. I mean, this is such a special show. This is such a treasure right here. Yeah. There, there, there's the message. Oh, <laughs> right, and right then and there, you have the next person popping in. We're going to bring him in right now. Hello there. Is it me, guys? Yes, you, sir. Tass, right? Yes, Tass from Melbourne. How are you, lads? We're good. How are you, pal? Good morning. It's a morning. bloody good morning. It's a bloody good morning. Good morning. Uh, put I put the barbecue on and put some shrimp on, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. That's I'm not a, that old. Like a thousandth I'm... time where he, he sorry, like, sorry, that, that's just Costa. That's just that's just the horrible. That, that's just the horrible Costa, thing that Costa, the British people say to Australians. Costa, sorry, Costa, I'm just su- fucking around. I support Kati. I had meatball sandwich for for breakfast, so I asked for shrimps. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad breakfast, in my opinion. I'm as, I'm as Greek as they come, my friend. <laughs> Bravo, bravo, the, bravo. the only thing that was missing was a tipuraki. But uh, after a that penalty shootout, I'm, 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 I'm making up. I'm making up for you. I'm making up for you. It's not tipuraki. It's not tipuraki. Okay, something is something. Uh, it's something better. But but anyway, Triple espresso maybe. I don't know. Good. Re, good, re, good. Ta, tas, I assume your name's Tassos, yeah? Anastasis. Anastasis. Ana, Anastasis. Anastasia. Excellent. Mate, tell me. I don't know if you tuned in at the beginning of the game. Uh, sorry, at the beginning of the game, beginning of the show. Um, I was I was uh, describing to to my namesake here about the feelings I was enduring, particularly after the Vatchlik save. I want I want you to tell us like how did you how did you find the match and what was going through like you know what was happening to you during the penalty right. shootout. No, you're right. I did miss the start. Sorry, boys. Um, I. Um... Look, definitely, I agree with you guys. I think we saw an improvement. I think the the back third linking up with the midfield was a lot better than what we've seen, you know, probably in the last six to eight months. Um, the movement of the ball was quicker on the ground. What we're lacking is that first touch, you know. Uh, we're still lacking that. And I don't believe we've got the quality in the final third. Unfortunately, Rangelovic, he's not at the standard we need. Um Masuras, he's in and out of the game. I know he gave two assists, yeah. Aspume, um, but he's just not there enough. And he lets himself down. He lets a team down. Um, we, we don't have we don't have width, and, and that's our biggest issue. And, we, and you guys have been calling it for the last oh, how many years, right? Or maybe year at least. Um, so that's that's definitely a gap. I, I, I'm worried about what happens if Tequino leaves because LRB yeah. he's he can't finish a game, let alone a season. I mean, he's a risk. There's no doubt about it. What but, do you think about AK-47, though, playing up front, leading the attack? Because he is a striker, basically. Who's AK-47? Oh, sorry. Uh, Kamara. Uh, from, oh, uh, Abubakar. I, Abubakar. Not Abubakar. I, haven't seen, I haven't seen enough of him, lads. And he looks like he looks like he's one of those guys that needs a bit of space for me. You know, not, not back to goals. He's not that type of striker. But, I, again, I, I don't think I've seen enough. I, it, it, it's, it, I can't give you more, more of a considered... Um, you know, um, thought on that, but um, but look, I think defensively we were sound. I think the two, the t- the two stoppers, um, Bay and um, and C said did a decent job. Uh, but look, I I, I agree. I think the, I thought the goal was coming. You know, it was inevitable. It, we always concede at that time. 
uh, yeah. of the game. We always yeah. have in our bloody history, you know. Um, it, it's a typical Olympiacos thing to happen, right? And and then they go down to 10 men and, and, and I felt like we sort of took the game on and then just went back into, you know, relaxed mode and just sat back instead of pushing forward to get that killer third goal and just and just finish the game off. But but I understand the guys are, were probably tired. It, uh, you know, it, it was probably, you know, they're down, the morale's down, and that that mentally drains you, apart from the physical draining. So all in all, I, I think we'll get through the next game. We've got some key players coming back. Uh, we are looking better. I believe in the coach. We needed the change. Um, onwards and upwards. It's, it's the best we can hope for right now. I mean, uh, it is a, it is going to be a difficult season. How do you predict the season is going to go in terms of league, cup, and Europe? I don't know, man. I mean, sh- we're, we're the only Greek team in Europe again. What does that tell you? You know, yeah. I mean, it, it's not good enough. I mean, Bulk should have qualified through. Actually, all three teams should have qualified through. But they, you know, we've we've let ourselves down. Is it experience? Is it is it know how? Is it belief? I, I don't know what it is, but. But you know, I think Panas talking themselves up this season. But you know, they'll they'll lose they'll lose the title in Ep- in Epar here, like they always do, right? They might win a derby or two. They'll pull some big results, but then they'll you know they'll let themselves down week in week out when they're playing uh, outside of Athens. I, I believe we'll get it again. I don't I don't see us having any real competition. And fundamentally, that's our bloody problem, you know. Yeah. And and it has been for a long time that we don't have any competition in Greece. I mean, even the fans don't have that hunger. Like, because it's just expected that we'll win it by 15 bloody points. (laughs) Well, personally, I feel like this Olympiacos against those opponents can win the league. I think the double is a stretch. And I feel like if Corberan manages to improve this team, bring them to his level, make them understand what it is that he wants, brings a couple of good more, a couple of good players. Conrad de la Fuente uh, transitions well. I feel like Olympiacos, if they're lucky in the draws, there's so many ifs, I understand. They can still make it out of the uh, group stages of the Europa League. What do you uh, think? I don't disagree. I don't disagree, Costa. But you know what? I, we're waking up at 4.30 to watch these matches. You must stay out of Steve. So <laughs> at least give us some good football. I don't, I don't really care first, second, third or fourth, as long as we compete, as long as we're brave, as long as we've got some, some, um, some, some just a sense of calm on the ball. And we don't play like these panicked, you know, school children. Like, and that's what I hate. Right, just dispose the ball at any cost. If they can play some decent football, I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not wedded to getting anywhere in Europa. I think we'll build for next year, and we'll yeah. give it a good shape. Right, I think that's 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 me being realistic, optimistic. Yeah, why not? I think we could we could we could do some good things, but I still feel like we're missing quality in in, in the full in the forward front third. So, and unless they get a striker, which is not going to happen, or LRB suddenly puts uh, put, puts himself in, into reverse mode, like, you know, like mm-hmm. Ferris Bueller's day off type thing with, with that, what they did with the car, and he, and he loses some years. Uh, I, can't, I can't see us being too damaging going forward, especially in, in, the, in the penalty area. I think they could still get a striker. I think, I think they could. I mean, there's money coming in from the Europa League. 11 million euros. Costa, am I, am I wrong? Yeah, close to 10. Meto, yeah, meto so- Calimera. Meto Calimera. 11, 11 million. Uh, yeah. If they make it to the Europa League, Group stage. Oh, if they make it, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, what do you, what do you guys? What, are you guys uh, optimistic again? I, I haven't seen much of uh, of Poland. You guys, they're not. In, you guys they're see, not in good shape. They're not in good shape. They're not. They, they did. No. They did beat. Um, they did beat Maccabi two 0 at home, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm but sure. Maccabi were already four 0 up. No, I know that, but still, you know. No, I don't know I mean, how serious Maccabi was. Adi Harongi can help us with this. Yeah. Uh, but basically, this a serious Olympiacos side, especially with Huang and Leitner in the team. Maybe a Conrad, if there's time, they're gonna they should make it through. But yes, I mean this is a transitional period. Yeah, yeah. Don't disagree. Anyway, lads, love the show. Thanks for entertaining us every week. You're absolute legends. Keep up the good work. Without you, I think my, my Mondays and uh, my midweeks <laughs> would be quite empty. <laughs> so, uh, so take care and, and, and uh, Dios my sister. I said, that's it. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. joining us. Thank Have you for joining us. It's always about you guys and hope to hear from you very soon. Ade, nasce cala. Nasce cala, tas. E pieces. E pieces. Bye, guys. That was Das from Melbourne. Guys, just to say it again, like, this show is nothing without you. For all yep. the work that, that we 
for all the work that that we do and the love that we put into this like if we didn't get you know love back as well it's um mutually reinforcing relationship with you guys and you guys are the fuel for for the engine of gate seven international yeah yeah, so absolutely keep it coming spread the word um hit that like button it helps get this episode out to more Olympiacos fans all over the world um i just want to pick up on some of the things that that Das mentioned about about the width and the final third it's true uh what he said there is I think we saw improvement in the midfield today. We mentioned it already. Uh, Jan M. Villa for me, uh, man of the match type performance. He's involved in the equaliser where the um, the striker from the other team gets ahead of him to, to get the, the, the second goal to equalise. But um, I think I, I agree with what that said. The problem is in the final third. I think while a lot of us will probably be Happy to see the back of Tiquinho, uh after after today as well. That leaves us with El Arabi, and it leaves us with Abu Bakar Kamara, who's not fit, he's coming from a from a groin strain, coming back from a groin strain injury. I don't know if he's going to be fit for next week. And basically, then your only other striker is Denis Aliagic and uh, Olympiakos B team strikers. There has been talk about possibly making a move for Tasos de Vicas. He's playing in Holland. I think it is for Utrecht, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know to what extent a player like Tassos Lovikas can can fit the system at uh, at Olympiacos. It's a player that I quite like actually. I think if um, if he wasn't playing for Volos with Bells, I think Olympiacos would have tried to to bring him before he went out to Holland. But we. You know, we are bringing in Conrad de la Fuente. He's rumoured to be coming into Athens already tomorrow to sign a, a loan deal. It will be a loan plus option. Not sure what that option is going to be yet. We're waiting for more info on that. And as soon as we do have information, we will inform you of that. So keep locked on the socials, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Yep, uh, and of course, of course, Ari is going to be doing a deep dive. I think he's, I mean, he's probably going to be looking at data. and Absolutely. And- an amazing Tonight. analyst, an amazing analyst, yeah. incredible analyst, Aris Bulubasis. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the button so that when Ari's deep dive comes out on Conrad de la Fuente, you guys are the first to see it and the first to, to hear Ari's thoughts and Ari's verdict. Ari's verdict at the end is always, is always money. Fair. Well, and, and it's fair. It's pretty, fair. he does always pretty fair. well. He does pretty well with these things. Uh, having said that, I don't think Conrad de la Fuente is enough. Um, I think yeah. I think we are, and I put myself into this as well, I think we are quite unfair on Yorgos Masuras, uh, a lot of us, a lot of the time. I think Yorgos Masuras is a player that, like Oleg Rabchuk, he's been run into the ground by the previous manager. He's played non-stop for the club, national team, club and country the last two years without any rest whatsoever uh, the national team players also got about five to i think five to ten days rest because they were playing in that fucking nations league useless competition during the summer a uh, great idea by uefa or fifa whoever whichever idiot organizes these events um sorry for that small rant but i think uh, masuras is one of those players that fits into a system if you fit him into a team that functions he can be very efficient for yeah. you. Uh, you look at he Olibiakos. understands what he needs to do. But but right now he can't play that kind of leadership role for the team. Yeah. Uh, he can't he, he can't be the player that puts the team on his back. He needs to be put into a team that works. And there he has his role. And right now it's not working like that. We don't have a properly functioning team. So that means that Masuras is less efficient. I think that needs to be said. Um, so I don't want to always be shitting on him because he is an Olympiacos fan. Um, you know, that, that counts for something as well. Huh? That we need players that, that bleed the jersey, that, that, that feel for the team and, you know, they, they, they love the symbol on, on the shirt. And, uh, yeah, those are, I think, we need another winger is basically the point I was getting to. Another winger, another centre back, definitely another midfielder. Because let's face it, Madikamara is leaving, and well, a striker. 
Yeah. Lot of, not a lot of days left, but I think Olympiacos will pull it through, pull it off, at least most of them. Yeah, I mean, some people have already been talking about a uh, transfer tsunami in the coming days. Yeah, yes. If, yes, if that yes. means more work for us, you know, great, fantastic, bring it on. Like, uh, so we're expecting more movement in the coming days. But we haven't seen Huang yet. I'd love to see Huang yeah. playing with Kunde and then Villa. That could well, be something. Uh, so there's been a lot of comments, and sorry, I've only, we, we have seen this comment from the dawn of the Black Hearts. Uh, what is happening with Huang, the South Korean guy? That's a great name. <laughs> the dawn of the Black Hearts. Um, my, my good friend, um, Huang didn't get his, um, his, uh, his card or the blue card from the Russian Federation. It wasn't sent to Greece in time for him to be registered for the UEFA list. There has been there have been reports already that the card has come through and he is going to be eligible for the next round of the Europa League. So he will be eligible to play against Apollon. He's been training for more than more than five to ten days now. I think he's been with the with the team. So very much looking forward to, to seeing this guy play. He looks very slick, very good on the ball. And um, I think he he'll bring more legs in midfield, but besides the technique. It is going to be nice to have like somebody fresh in the team with um, with that technical ability and that ability to play the field. Like he looks, and this is only from the tape, but he he looks a really really good player. I'm very excited to see this guy play. I think mm -hmm. uh, we can see some some good things. I'm I'm curious to see how he's going to fit. Because I get the impression that the coach likes Pierre Kunde as well. Uh, if he can mould him into something, maybe it's what you said, Costa. Maybe you did, we do see a 4-3-3 with Mbila, Kunde and Juan in midfield. Let's see. Uh, next week against Apollon, we might see Let's him see. in the starting lineup already. Exactly. Exactly. What else we got? The team needs to win matches to get qualifications to earn time to improve after this horrific night, I think is what you wanted to say. Costas, terrific night. I think you meant horrific night with with Maccabi. Um and we're gonna we've been going for an hour and twenty. I realize it's nearly three o'clock Greek time. Yeah, we, we have we have to go, guys. I mean, and we're filled we're filled with alcohol. <laughs> I'm still finishing my okay whiskey. i am i am okay i am no 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 we're uh we're gonna go through a few more few more comments and, and let's close go this let's up. go let's go let's go always look, time for the fans look at my eyes dc says get the players called brown once and fire anyone else marinakis needs to trust him he made gold from garbage i think you're talking about huddersfield no offense huddersfield fans maybe uh, he does mean it'll be a course as well i don't know maybe maybe uh nolan linda says Andre Green looks a decent player might have to look into him um no thanks personally I think we can do a little bit better than that uh what else we got Steve Sai big up Berlin yes with Steve big, big hello big ups to uh to uh to the fans in Berlin and Steve Sai yes uh um Adi's got some insights on on Doran Leidner if you guys haven't seen the uh, scout report deep dive that Ari's done on Doran Leidner. You can go and check that out as well on the channel. There's a playlist dedicated to all the scout reports that we've done. And there's a uh, Costas cat making a special guest appearance on the pod as well. Yasu Costas cat. Um, Adi says not long ago, Doran Leidner picked up his first call up to the Israeli national team played in the UEFA nations league. He was one of the most significant players. I think he also scored a goal against Germany. Um, what else we got? Yes, he is an attacking left back. Yeah. He's saying we saw our players trying to kick the ball to the other side last 10, 15 minutes. They scored goal after, as it happened many times in the past. Steve Sai says Martins was the biggest mistake. Should fire him after the cup final with Laurita. Um, not sure if he means La Mia in the first season. Not I'm sure thinking about maybe... La Mia, but like the thing about Martins is that he should have left after the end of the season because the way things panned out, it just it didn't work out for Olivia because it didn't work out for Martins's legacy. It would have been so much easier if he left with the cup in his hands because he would have left with uh, on a high. And it was obvious his football wasn't working. 
maybe Olympiacos could have just said, listen, you get a new contract if you win the double. You don't win the double, you got to go. It would have been so much easier. And I'm going to ask you, Costas, right here, because, like, let's be honest, we had some info about that. There was info about Olympiacos looking at Ernesto Valverde for a third run. Do you reckon Olympiacos? We did have that info. They were looking at it, didn't we? We did, didn't we? They tried, yeah, yeah. No, but the way I see it, like, you keep Martins, there's no point in looking at Valverde. He went to Athletic Bilbao, which are the club of his heart, okay? Yeah. But before that, if Olympiacos were quicker and said, you know, listen, we're out of the cup, that means we cannot go on with Martins because it's obvious the writing is on the wall. This team cannot go anymore. Couldn't they have signed the Valverde or someone else? Look, uh, I'm not sure we, we talked about this before, but essentially the mistake I think the club made was that they relied too much on Martins's um, results in, um, in European qualification. And nostalgia. They, I reckon there was a bit of a nostalgia. Yeah, they, I think they a pair of hands. Is, is the nostalgia in a sense that they thought um, they thought the first two seasons like we could reproduce that but I think just after after two three years like the same thing um, a lot of things happened in the dressing room I think I think in terms of the um, player choices of you know players coming in I think that Francois Modesto and Pedro Martins didn't really see eye to eye on some things it led to a lot of congestion in terms of too many players in the dressing room when players aren't playing there's discontent um there was a lot of you know the Ruben Semedo stuff uh we talked about his impact in the dressing room but also uh you know in a positive and a negative way but uh, this is uh, this is one thing I will say is that when um when you're getting results and you're focused on getting the results only and you're getting those results while continuously playing at, at a low level, then that's going to come back to bite you. Yeah. So yeah. we were happy, I think, to be getting the results and the result was winning the league last season when in reality we could have, we could have said earlier that, you know, we don't renew his contract, we see it out. And then we start something fresh. Or maybe give him something to work for. Like tell him, listen, you win the double, you win a contract. We're not we're yeah. not liking the football. The writing is on the wall. Shit, we could see it. Olympiacos couldn't see it. We we went out on record and we said, guys, next season stinks of Aruka. It stinks of uh, Ludo Gordes. It stinks of Maccabi Tel Aviv. It stinks of... of who am I missing? Someone I'm missing. Hapoel Bersheva. Hapoel Bersheva. Bravo, Recosta. They couldn't yeah. see it. Really? No, but sometimes sometimes you're too close to things and you don't want to see it, what's happening in front of you. That's also that's true. That's also true in a business environment. Valverde? Do you think they could have gotten Valverde? Hey, difficult. yeah, you want to go to Bilbao, but we can give you Champions League. Difficult, difficult. Of course it's difficult, but... You have to give him, you have to give him well, like... Yeah. You, you have to go to Valverde with like a 3-4 million euro contract a year and say, here, 3-4 million euro plus a 20 million euro budget, do what you want. For me, if you're Why serious. Why not, though? Why not? Why not, though? It's Valverde. Anywho, it's Corberan right now. I have a lot of confidence in him. I'm very impressed with his work in the championship last season. And in uh, less than a week, he got Olympiacos in Europe. Drought here is most proper translation. Do you like that, Costa, my friend? <laughs> there have been better. a few we suggestions coming in here as well. We could do better. <laughs> okay, but know. thank you for the suggestion, always. Thank you for the suggestion. Corberan is a good coach. He says we must support him, but we need many transfers and players have to go. Goyado would be a good choice and it would be uh, great if we get him. Costa, did he go to Elche? Like I've seen a lot of traffic. I haven't about... heard. I haven't heard, buddy. I haven't heard. Yeah, so we need to... Uh, don't get your hopes up. Uh, Goyado, I think his priority will be to remain in La Liga. I think it's good that we managed to ensure that we continue in the Europa League, at least for qualification. There's still that possibility to get to the group stages. So that'll be good in negotiations with players because it will be different uh, depending if we're playing Europa League or if we're playing Conference League football. A um, few more comments, Costa, and we'll call it a night. Uh, Dasos Coveo says football is punishing us for all the wrong choices last year. Yeah, and the group before. We, yeah, and we're just touching on that. Uh, Daso, to your point. No fullbacks. For two years, <laughs> yes, yes. But now we have fullbacks. 
three good ones. Let's see. Let's see Doran Don't look at it up, like. Uh, Manos is saying, is it possible to freshen the team, have quality fitness level at this point, or is it too late? Well, who kn- you, maybe like, it's too you, late for Europe. Maybe it's too late for Europe, but not for Greece, is what I'll say. Yeah. There's also November, when the World Cup starts. It's almost like another opportunity yeah, for that could help. freshening Greece up. Is not or, Greece is not in it. Yeah. So. Uh, what happened to Yanis Kosti? He was Cyprus' biggest talent a few years ago. He's playing for the B team, mate, as far as I know. He's still there. Um, oh, this is interesting. Adi says, by the way, I think you're better than Apollon, even though we lost them the last match. Oh, there's another one for you, Costa, for the Petri Nachronia. Uh, Count uh, Gunther that's says, I like the that. Baron Years, that's a good one. Yeah. Bango says, no ticket back for Tiquinho. tiquinho has gone. Uh, Pango Panayotis says he can walk home. God, uh, Nolan, Hussein 35. El Arabi is way better than Tikinio. Tikinio has no Olympiacos character whatsoever. I will say Tikinio scored some big goals for us last season, mate. Yeah, uh, for yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a massive goal. Um, Huge essentially. Goal. Essentially, getting us through to the to the last was it the the round of thirty two Atalanta as well, yeah, yeah. Scored a nice goal in Atalanta. I was in front of you, yeah. You were in Bergamo. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen that vlog, again, uh, a plug here for that vlog from Bergamo. That was a really good one. I really enjoyed that. Uh, Go and check that out. Playlist for match day vlogs as well on our channel. ASG seven guys. When Marco Silva saw that Olympiacos didn't want to improve, he left the day after. Pedro Martins instead stayed after year after year with two poor preseason preparations. Megali Guveda Yaton uh, Yaton Marco Silva. And he's doing a fantastic job. It looks at, at Fulham, even That's though Fulham, it looks yes. he, Very he, good made, start. he made yes, Liverpool, Liverpool sweat. What else have we got? Platy, oh, there's so many comments that we just did so not. So many comments. Manage to Costa, get to Costa, my man. How about, uh, shall we call it? Being a, a Safino, I'm going to go through a few more comments. But <laughs> <Costa> <laughs> Let's see. Leandro says, I live in England the last six years. I can assure you that very few Greek teams can compete in the championship. Most of our teams are for League One against Bristol Rovers <laughs> and Oldham. There there's you a, go. There you go. There's, there's an go. opinion. There's an opinion for you. Let's get someone new. Uh, <laughs> more. I live in England, been watching Championship for years, sick and tired of watching donkeys hoofing the ball in the air, competitive but very low football in quality. Depends has on the team. Uh, Southpaw, have you watched Greek League? No. It uh, depends what team you watch in the Championship too. Uh, it is true. There are some teams that like to lift the ball up in the air. I will uh, take that point. A few more... <laughs> few more comments you've got three more choose wisely outlaw jorge says coach shouldn't park the bus after our goal ben's defense is keeping the possession Olympiacos should only park the bus against teams like city Bayern, etc i think i mentioned that i mentioned something about this during the chat that i think uh, what happens when when uh, when a team like this in a in the current situation faces difficulties you you tend to slip back into bad and old habits and i think i don't I'm not sure if this was an instruction. I think he was actually asked this this question at the um, in the press conference, but I I can't remember his answer. But definitely, he acknowledged that we were we we were defending uh, defending for our lives, uh, and and like he said before the game and after the game, it was a game where we needed to to be brave uh, and adapt to, to the situation. So uh, otherwise... Olympiacos didn't give a crap about the quality of football against yeah. Roma, but it's Lava, all they cared about was uh, qualifying. That's it. The night is young, the season is young. Exactly. We've got a few more comments. There's no way we're going through all of these. Not tonight, guys. Sorry. Um... Ella, Dio coma, Ella, Boris. Dio coma. Yorgos Karalabus. I've lost another three years of my life because of that game. <laughs> well, you, so, you, 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 and I, you, you and I both, buddy. You says and I both. George. Thank you for your comment, George. Yeah. What else we got? 
midnight. Yeah, people saying they were freaking out when the penalty started. Yeah, well, we all did. Luto got its memories. Manos, nice thank you very much. This is a this is this is all down to Costa Levoyani. This is all down to uh, to Labrosirmo. All down to Ari Bulubasi. All down to Peter. They it's are. Kind of I, I I have been I have been working as a journalist for twelve years on and off, seven years full time on and off twelve. I gotta tell you guys. Those those boys, those guys, are the best journalists. There are not journalists I have ever met in my life. Keep following them. Absolutely passionate and absolutely professional. Keep following them. Thank you so much, Mano. Hope to hear from you very very soon. Maybe join us for a chat. Exactly. No, thank you very much for that comment. And I think we'll end it there. Costa. We'll end it there because I got late. a very late dinner. I'm working tomorrow morning. I'm filled with alcohol. And I got to protect myself. Thank you very much, those of you that kept up with us tonight. Uh, it's late in Greece, wherever you are. Again, thanks for joining. Hit that like button if you like what you heard tonight. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Spread the word. Help us keep growing. We're here. Good times and bad times always. Gate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. See you next time. Take care, guys. Ο που βάζεσαι, πάμε